Hello everybody, today we're going to learn how to bake a complicated mesh down onto a simple mesh in Blender. Now this is something that's very easy in most 3D programs, but it's a bit of a tightrope walk in Blender, and I couldn't find very many decent tutorials on it. I finally sat down two folks that knew how to do it, got them to teach me, and this is my stab at a decent tutorial. So what's the point? Well, let's say that you've been modeling something and you've put on too many greebles, or you've been sculpting it too high a, uh, a subdivision level, and now it's got a few too many faces, like, say, 200,000 for a die. So this D6, we would like it to have only a couple of faces, like maybe six. So what are we going to do to bake this 200,000 face object down onto a six face object? Well, we're going to create a new mesh that is the size we want. Oh, we created it over there. Let's create it in the middle. Here we are. And that's what we're going to be baking it down onto. You can also use some multi-resolution editing if you'd like to do this, uh, but I'm not going to show you how. You'll have to figure that out on your own. Good luck. So now as we go through this, I want you to pay attention to everything I'm doing because every step I'm doing is pretty close to necessary. And if you have anything set up differently, you're probably going to get a completely opaque error. So let's go through it. First off, you're going to want to be in Blender Render. If you're in Cycles Render, you're going to have to know how to set up Cycles materials, and I'm not going to teach you that. Secondly, you're going to need to create a new material for your target object. You can't reuse the same material. It has to be a new material, because you need to have a new image. So let's go ahead and select our cube, and then we'll create a new material, which we'll call the Bake Material. You don't have to call it a Bake Material. You can call it whatever you want. Now, what we're going to do when we're baking down onto this, we're going to take that complex topology of our 200,000 face mesh, and we're going to print it onto a texture. And we're just going to use that texture as our normal map. But that texture doesn't exist right now. So we go over into the images section, and we create it new. Now, you may think that this has created a texture since it says texture, but it hasn't. You have to actually go down here and tell that you need a new image, which we'll call the bake image. You can set it to whatever detail level you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the defaults. So now we have a place to store everything that we need to do. But this is supposed to be a normal map. So for my sanity, I'm going to assign it as a normal map on the material, just so that we can make sure everything's working right. So over here in the material, we're going to scroll down. And we're going to take a look at our... Uh, where is it? Oh, is it over here? It's over here. Here. Unselect color and instead select normal. And that sh should do it, but right now there's no map. It's just an image that's free-floating in space. There's no relation between it and the object we've created. You need to UV unwrap your object. Now, if you've got no experience UV unwrapping your object, well, this is a big thing and you have to do it all the time. Uh, this is mandatory, so we're going to just go ahead and select all the faces. And I've put the UV map up over here just so you can see it. Go over here and we're going to select the smart UV project because we don't really care. And this is what we ended up with. Now the key to this is you're going to want to make sure that your UV map does not go off the edge of the image and does not overlap itself at any point. If there's any overlap, that stuff will get done twice. It won't work out right. And if it goes off the edge of the image, that stuff can't get printed to the image. So... Something like this is generally pretty good. Um, you can do overlaps and stuff if you're feeling fancy smancy, but you're going to have to learn how to do that stuff on your own because I'm not going to teach you. Over here in this window, we're going to go ahead and select the bake image. I'm not 100% sure that's necessary, but it makes it easy for us to see what's going on. Now are we ready to bake? Can we bake now? Yes, yes we can. Select the thing you would like to bake, then select the thing you're going to be baking too, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this little camera icon, and then we're going to go down to the bottom where it says bake. Boink. So we need to make sure that these bake settings are what we would like them to be. So we're going to set this up as normals, and we're going to make sure that it's selected to active, which is what that says. See? You can do this with a multi-resolution editor uh, if you're sculpting more carefully than I am. I'm not going to be doing that today. You're going to want to have a, a distance. And we may have to screw with the bias. We'll find out shortly. If you find that this results in something strange, try screwing with the bias. It worked for me. So let's go ahead and give it a shot, shall we? Bake! Look at that! That is a normal map! 
Did it work? Well, let's go ahead and grab our mesh. Here it is. And let's just see what it looks like in rendered mode. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. And that is how you bake a mesh down. So that's 200,000 faces and that's six. I think that's fairly decent. Pretty good lossiness. And that's how you do it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If something went horribly wrong in yours, feel free to ask me what's up. Uh, I can't say I'll help you because I'm very bad at getting Blender to do the things it should do, but I'll give it a shot.